Good morning, everybody. And a warm welcome to all of you to our worship service today. And just from my side as well, a very warm welcome to Wee Fergus and to his whole family and all his friends. It's lovely to see you here with us today. Let us now worship God. Let us make a joyful noise. Singing glory to God. Offering glorious praise. Let us sing to our God. How awesome are your deeds. Our first hymn this morning is hymn 561, Blessed Assurance. Welcome to all the boys and girls here in the church today. 
Now I'd like to ask you all a question. Who can tell me what you see on the screen up there? Anybody? Horses. It looks like horses, Nancy. You don't know, Louisa, they like you. It looks like horses. But you know what? Those black animals that you see up there on the screen are not actually the animals. It's their shadows. Let's zoom in quickly. It's not the horse, it's a zebra. But the shadow looks exactly like that of a horse. And can you see what happened there? This photo was taken right from the top. And it was taken of the zebra, so you can see it there at the bottom. But because the shadows were so big at that point in the day, when we looked at the first photo, all we could <coughs> see were the shadows. And now we have an expression that says, afraid of your own shadow. And that usually refers to someone who is scared of everything. And this picture, it wasn't really about the shadows, it was about the zebras, but all we could see were the shadows, although the shadows were not really important. And if somebody's scared of everything, we say they're scared of their own shadow. So I would like to show you a wee video clip now. That's very funny, isn't it, boys and girls? That wee girl was literally afraid of her own shadow. But Jesus teaches us in the Bible that we don't have to be afraid of anything because he is always with us. He is the light of the world. And light doesn't have a shadow. I would like to illustrate this to you quickly, but it isn't very easy because the light in the church isn't very good. But I'm going to show you something here if you can see. If I put my hand there, it makes a shadow, right? If I put my hand there with a match in it, it makes a shadow. But what's going to happen if I light this match? Just have a wee look at the shadow now. All you see is still my hand and the match. The flame, the light, doesn't have a shadow. There's a wee picture up there for those of you who couldn't see all the way back here. Light doesn't have a shadow. Now how cool is that? And I think this is a very important thing for us to remember. Because if we believe in Jesus, who is the light for the world, he will drive all the shadows and our lives away. And this morning, we are going to be reminded of that and of how much he loves us when we baptize, we pray. I would now like to read us the words of institution for baptism. The Gospel tells us that Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by John. As he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens break open and the Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. 
You are my beloved son, and you I take delight. Jesus' baptism was completed through his dying and to rising again. Our baptism is the sign of dying to sin and to rise into new life in Christ. It's Christ himself who baptizes us. By the spirit of Pentecost, he makes us members of his body, the church, and he calls us to share in his ministry and the world. By water and the Holy Spirit, God claims us as his own. He washes us from sin and he sets us free from the power of death. And this sacrament, the love of God, is offered no. to each one of us. Though we cannot understand or explain it, we are called to accept that love with the openness and trust of a child. In baptism, we are assured of the love that God has for us and the sign and seal of the Holy Spirit is placed upon us. Let us now ask God to do this for us today. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for your gifts of water and the Holy Spirit. In remembrance of everything you have done for us, and in joyful trust, we bring Fergus to the waters of baptism now. Let your word speak your spirit the same, that our faith become trust in your promises, this common water become the waters of baptism, and this child become one with yourself and with us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lindsay and Peter, will you and Fergus please come forward? Presenting your son for baptism, Lindsay and Peter, desiring that he may be grafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church, do you share the belief in the Christian faith which this church confesses? Let us now move to the fold. Fergus, it was for you Jesus came into the world. For you he lived and showed God's love. For you he endured the darkness of the cross and cried with the last, it is accomplished. For you he triumphed over death and rose into newness of life. All this he did for you, Fergus, though you do not yet understand. And so the words of scripture are fulfilled. We love God because God first loved us. That's all right. Fergus Booth, I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit. And may the Spirit of God descend upon you and dwell in your heart forever. Amen. Let us now sing God's blessing upon this family. Please stay seated when we sing hymn 796.
I would now like to invite Fray Francisco Fernandez to come join us here in the front, and if you can all please face me again. <clears throat> Lindsay and Peter, Fergus now belongs to God in Christ. The Christian community is his home, and there will always be a place kept in it for him. Tell him of his baptism, and unfold to him the treasure he's been given today, so that as he grows up, he can make his own response in faith and love. Do you then promise, God being your helper, to share with Fergus the truths and mysteries of the Christian faith, make your home one of Christian love, and by prayer and example, bring him up in the life and worship of Christ's church. Oh. Lindsay is here representing herself and her husband, Pira, who is on call at the hospital this morning. Lindsay, so on behalf of both of you, do you promise, God being your helper, to always set an example to Fergus and to be there for him and his parents whenever they need you in faith, hope, and love? Thank you very much. Can I ask you, please, for to please face the congregation and will the congregation please stand? You who gather here today represent the worldwide church, the universal church in heaven and on earth. Word and sacrament bring you joy and also responsibilities as God's people. Do you welcome Fergus Booth and do you renew your commitment to love before all God's children in a kindly and Christian way and to share with them the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ? Please be seated. Let us pray. God of love, we rejoice again to receive your grace in word and sacrament. We have heard your call and are made new by your spirit. Guide and guard Fergus all his days. May your love hold him, your truth guide him, your joy delight him. Bless his parents, Lindsay and Peter, that he may grow up in a secure and happy home. Give to his whole family wisdom and courage, laughter and peace, and the love that endures all things. And give to his both parents, Lindsay and Peter, the grace to live a life of example to your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. I would now like to invite May Ireland in her capacity as church elder and not only as great grand Fergus to come hand have his baptismal certificate. And I would also now like to ask Louise of Faith to please come give him a week off on behalf of Sunday Club. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We are now going to sing our baptismal hymn during which his God mom will introduce Fergus to the congregation. And for this reason, I would also like to ask you all to stay seated when we sing hymn 530, One More Step Along the World I Go. <laughs> Thank you. 
some fun outside while the grown-ups have to stay behind and lesson a little bit longer. <laughs> Our reading this morning is taken from John, John chapter 5, and I'm reading from verses 1 to 9. Listen to the word, the healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate Pool, which is in, which in Aramatic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Even a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. Amen. Thanks be to God for this poor reading from his holy word. Let us now sing hand 512, To God Be the Glory. <laughs>
Reading Sunday worship at the General Assembly, the moderator spoke about fear. He said that we are so often scared of the unknown, which in turn makes us afraid of change. But without change, we cannot move forward. The Church of Scotland is going through a tremendous period of change at the moment. The governance structure of the church is changing. New presbyteries are being formed. Decisions have been made at the assembly that make some people very happy, but that upsets other people at the same time. Congregations are being asked to link or unite neighboring congregations and some churches even have to close. And all this is very scary because we are so used to being church and the way we've always been. On a different level, Lindsay and Peter, this is true of your lives too. Because you are very used to living life in a certain way. But now, this wee man has joined your family and that changed everything. But just like having a brand new member in your family can be daunting, but is mostly exciting, that's how we should feel about change. Susan Jefferson wrote a book entitled Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. She described how fear originally had a positive purpose to protect us from danger. If a wild animal storms us, for instance, it's fear that will make us flee or fight. But unfortunately, for many people, fear becomes an obstacle something that holds us back from living our lives to the full. Jaber says that if we feel scared, we should just push through it to cope with it. We should feel the fear and do it anyway. Because if we don't, we could get so wrapped up in fear but we literally won't be able to move forward. But actually, fear is nothing but a feeling. So it is possible to learn to overcome it, to feel it and do it anyway. We should never allow fear to entangle us or even The passage we read from the Bible was about a man who was literally paralyzed. In the first century Mediterranean world, people who had any kind of disability were cast out of society. They had to fend for themselves because it was believed that they were probably in that state because they were punished for their sins. So nobody wanted to have anything to do with them. The sheep gate where this man we read about was, was located in Jerusalem on the eastern side of the city wall. There was a bath that was fed by a natural spring, and every so often it would bubble up. The belief was that if you could just get into the water while it's standing, you would were abandoned there at the city gate, Jesus went to go speak to them because he knew that it wasn't their fault that they had health problems. He knew it had nothing to do with their own choices or with any kinds of sins they might have committed. And he wanted to teach the people of their time to treat everyone with respect. He also wanted to teach the people who were sitting there by the bar that it wasn't the water that healed them, but their faith in God. The water was just a sign. 
symbol of cleansing. Almost like what we've experienced during the baptism here this morning. So Jesus asked the man, Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? How do you listen to his answer? He doesn't say, life changed. Big time. But then in his way. He might have been scared to take that step. But once he did, he never looked back. We might be afraid of change. But that's very often because we don't realize at the time how positive the outcome could be. But you know who are not afraid of change? We won't. When children are still young, too young to think about the consequences of their actions, they are not afraid of anything. One of the most exciting milestones in a baby's life is when they take their first steps. And before you two wipe out your eyes, Lizzie and Peter, that will be focus. Starting to walk makes for a big change in a baby's life and also in his parents. And if you think about it, going from not being able to walk to being able to even run anywhere you want to go, that is a big change. But kids do this naturally without overthinking it. Why? Because that's how God made us, to be able to move forward. And of course, it's easy to take a step like this because there will be parents encouraging the wee one, cheering him on. And most importantly, he will instinctively know that if he loses his balance, his mom or dad will catch him with their outstretched hands. So, he knows that there is nothing to be afraid of. Now we might all have lost that innocence of a child on our journeys through life. 
but let's learn an important lesson from that. If we want to have a full and meaningful life, all we need to do is to walk in faith. Our future might be uncertain, but our God is big, and he is always there, ready to catch us in his outstretched arms if we fall. Lindsay and Peter, teach Fergus this when he's old enough to understand. It's natural to feel fear, but we should do it anyway, because we are not doing it alone, ever. The God who can make a paralyzed man walk is the same God cheering us on from behind and stretching out his arms in front of us. Not a single thing we are afraid of in this life is bigger than us. So let's walk in faith every single step we take with confidence and with a song in our hearts because Jesus loves us. Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the world in which we live. Its beauty, the different colours, the shapes and sizes of everything around us. We thank you for our friends and family and neighbours and those we meet at work, in leisure time or at school. We thank you for Fergus and for the joy he has brought to his parents, grandparents and great-grandparents. And we thank you for all our young folk who come to church to learn of your love and work. Bless them and help us, the older children, nurture their faith and care about their welfare and help sustain and inspire us, the older children, to continue in our learning and faith journey. We thank you that we can help and care, that we can give and we can receive. Bless the offering we bring. Bless us too, Lord, that our money, our whole lives might be for you, that your will will be done for Christ's sake in the kingdom's cause. Living God, you came to our world through Christ to help, to heal, and to save. So now we pray for all those in any kind of need. We pray for the sick and the suffering, the poor and the hungry, the oppressed and the exploited, the lonely and the unloved, 
the aged and the infirm, the frightened and the anxious, the sorrowful and the bereaved, the helpless and hopeless. Reach out to them in love. There is so much need around us, in our communities, our country and the world. So many people crying out for help. Show us where and how we can respond. Give us the means, the will, the commitment and the love to reach out in the name of Christ, offering something of ourselves to others, even as he offered his all for us. Reach out to them in your life. Loving God, you are before us. You are behind us in all the changes and chances of our lives in all the uncertainties we face. You, Lord, provide assurance that whatever we are confronted with, your love will go on reaching out, your hand going on supporting, and your purpose going on being fulfilled. Help us to receive the freedom you offer that comes from knowing you hold all things in your hands, and nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Our concluding hymn today is hymn 96, You Are Before Me, God, and I think we Fergus just wants us to say because he doesn't like all this, so okay. So let's do that for him now. Please stand and sing, You Are Before Me, God. <laughs> Very special day after evermore.